Good day. My name is Ben Kruger. Welcome to my kitchen. I would like to demonstrate to you today how one makes biltong. First thing you need is a very sharp knife. Second thing you need is a nice piece of meat. This is the eye of Silverside. Start by slicing the meat in the thickness that you want. Some people prefer thicker and some people prefer thinner cuts. Just remember that if the thickness of your meat varies, then your biltong is not going to be dry at the same time. Try and keep them the same thickness, even slices all the way along your piece of meat. Now, when you hang your meat up to dry, you're going to lose about 50% of the meat's weight due to it drying out and losing moisture. All my meat has now been sliced and I've put the first layer of slices into this handy container. You can use a glass bowl, plastic, whatever you have to hand. Now the next step is to sprinkle it with brown vinegar. And you do that making sure that you've got it evenly covered with the brown vinegar and once your first layer has been covered it's time to turn it around. So I've turned it over, another sprinkle of brown vinegar all over the pork, that looks nice. Now, next step, biltong seasoning. A quarter cup like this is about enough for one kilogram of meat. It's about 45 grams. If you're one of those people who like to weigh stuff, get a scale. 45 grams of biltong spice to a kilogram of meat. I just use a quarter cup. Into the hand and make sure that you cover all the slices evenly. Because once again, if you don't, the meat is not going to cure in the same way on both sides. Once you've sprinkled it, Turn it over, here we go my baby. Make sure that it's flat so that you get your spices into all the little nooks and crannies and then continue on with your spicing. There we go. That's nice and even. And now you do the next layer. Once you've packed all your layers, your built on to be should stay in the container for about 24 hours and you can turn them every once in a while making sure that both sides of the meat are properly covered with vinegar and biltong spice. Once that is done, it's time to hang it up. A really nice South African party snack is the chili bite. But how do you make it? Simple. It's very similar to biltong, just a lot smaller. Yeah, it's the difference between Jonah Lomu and Francois Hochart. Continue slicing until all your meat has been sliced to the right thickness. And remember, if you don't slice them to the same thickness, they're not going to dry evenly. And you're going to end up with some dry pieces of chili bite and some wet pieces of chili bite. And it is my contention that chili bites always taste a lot better when they are dry. I've now sliced all the pieces from my chili bite and it's time to season them. Just as with the biltong, you start by sprinkling it on both sides with brown vinegar. And don't be scared to put on enough vinegar because not only does this preserve the meat, it also helps with the taste. Right, next step, chili bite seasoning. And um, this product by Crown National really is my favorite. It gives a wonderful flavor to the meat. And uh, don't be shy. Just get it in there. It's a little bit like suntan lotion. You don't want to miss any spots. Because then you don't tan evenly. Right, once it's covered on the one side, you turn it over. And do the other side. Put it into your hand. And put it over the meat. But a word of caution. Don't rub your eyes before you've washed your hands. Right, now that's done. We let it stand. For 24 hours, turning it every once in a while, and then 
it's time to hang it up. Right, the biltong and the chili bites have been curing for 24 hours. Now it's time to hang it up. Now if you don't have a biltong dryer, where would you hang your biltong? It has to be a cool place, there has to be ventilation, and you should be able to keep the flies, children, dogs and cats away from it. My grandmother used to hang the biltong under the bed. I'm not too sure that I'm going to do that with my Jack Russell. However, if you have a decent place to hang your biltong, the next thing you need is a hook. Now these little plastic hooks work very well. You put it through the meat, find a spot where it's not a lot of sinew, there you go, and your piece of biltong is ready to be hung. But now with the chili bites, you have a bit of a problem, because that just looks silly, man. So, what do I do? Arm clever. I use a paper clip. There you go. And you do that for your chili bites, go and hang them up, and within a very, very short time, you'll be able to enjoy biltong and chili bites, and what's more, you've got bragging rights, because you made it yourself. <laughs>